we're going to continue our look at Censure Touch, the JavaScript framework for building mobile and desktop applications. And what we're going to do this time is Censure Touch is an MVC, that's a model view controller framework. And we're going to take a look at some of the view and controller basics. And I'm going to show you some basic interaction and how to lay some things out on the screen. Uh, this may be particularly useful if, like myself, you spend a lot of time with Flash and you are finding that you're moving to different platforms. Um, hopefully this will give you an idea of how some of the interaction takes place. So the first thing I did was I created a brand new application, which at the moment is just out of the box. This is what you get when you run the Censure command to create the starting application. If you're not familiar with that, I do have a video on my website on uibuzz.com. Uh, which will run you through the basics of downloading, installing, and creating this basic application that they give you to start with. And so you can take a look at that video if you're not familiar with it. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what I've got here is the application I've created running on my local uh, MAMP Pro. I've set up a website here on my local machine to run it with, and I'm inside the Chrome browser and I've opened up the console here from the inspection tools, from the web developer tools, so that we can see what's going on, because we're gonna use this to put some output so we can understand what's happening. So out of the box, the first thing you get is this application, which has this first screen, and then a tab for a second screen with a video. And that's nice, it shows us that it's up and running, but we really don't need any of this. So let's go over to the code and start making some changes. Let's quickly go through the files here. I'm actually running in TextMate here, just in case you're curious. So it's created this My App folder for us. And inside there, you can see we have an app, and then we have a controller, a form, a model, uh, the store, and the view. So it breaks it down nicely for us. And the files that I've got open here is the app.js, which is this one here. And this is the file that essentially gets the application up and running. It's got some things in here. We're not really gonna to need to touch this right now. We will make a change in here later on. This is where we list our files and, and that'll make sense when we get there. And this other file that I've got here is the main view. This is that view that you see in the web browser. And as you can see, the way this works is in the configuration here, we have items and this first object is the first tab and this second object is the second tab. So for example, you can see it's got the video here and then that's the text on the first one. So we actually don't need any of these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take all of this and just remove it and go back to an empty array of items. And I'm just gonna save that. We'll go back to the web browser. And if I now reload that, you'll see that it's gonna start up the application and we'll get an empty view. That's what we wanna see. So that's where we're gonna start from. And then we're gonna start adding some basic elements and we'll now go through those. Before we add items, there's one thing I wanna point out. Notice that we have this empty tab bar down here. We don't have any items in the view anymore to tab between. So we really don't need a tab container. And for this particular application, all I need to do is use the, the simplest form on the screen, which is gonna be a container. So we'll go ahead and change this from a tab to a different style. And the way we do that is, Notice up here, it says extend ext.tab.panel. Well, we don't need the tab panel anymore. The one that we want to extend is quite simply ext.container. So I'm just gonna make that change and save the file. Let's go back to the browser, reload, and now you'll see you'll just get an empty screen. It's just an empty container with nothing in it. And that's what we need, the simplest form right here. So let's go back to the code and let's add some items. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm gonna add a very simple label and a very simple button. And you can find how to use these items in their documentation for Censure. The Censure documentation is truly outstanding. It's, it's really deep and really involved and has plenty of examples. I, I really recommend having it open. I have it open all the time when I'm working. And so what we'll do is, let me show you that documentation. We'll go to the browser. I've actually got a couple of tabs open here and I've actually got the views and controllers, but let's say I want to use a label. So the first thing I can do is in the search box, I will just type label and I'll select the one I want, which is right here. 
And so it tells me the very simple way to use a label. And, you know, you can literally copy and paste this stuff in. So to use a label, it just you need to use an X type of label. And then in HTML, we basically put what the label is. So I'm actually just going to copy these from the documentation. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it in the code here. But there's an important thing to point out, which is each of these items is an object. So as we know, we've got to go ahead and put these curly braces in here. So this is our first object. And I'm just going to save that. We'll now go back to the browser, go to my application and reload. And here's our very simple label. So let's do the next one. Let's do a button. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the items here. We'll add a comma and we will put in some new curly braces for a new object. And I'm going to paste the code and then I'll walk through it to save some time here for you. So what we've got is we describe an X type of button. We give the button a text label of the button. And then I set its width and height properties along with a margin and some badge text here, which is it'll be a little red indicator you'll see. And I also give it this ID of my button. Now you can also give it an item ID, but I'm using an ID here. So you're asking yourself, where do I find these properties? Well, let's go back to the documentation. Let's do a search for button. And if you look across the top here, you'll see that you can get the configs, the properties and the methods and events for a button along with the CSS variables and the mixins. So in the config here, you can see that it's got the items that I set. For example, here's the height and it gives you an explanation. So that's where I get those from. It's quite a long list, as you can see on a button here. Some of these are a lot longer. So anytime you're looking for a property to be set, you'll probably find it in the configs, or at least you can use this list as a reference to know what your options are. So that's where those come from. So let's go back to the code. So that's what we have here. And I'm using an ID, as I say, of my button. That'll be important soon. So we'll just save that. Let's go back to the browser. And now let's reload our application. And we have a very basic button. It's got a margin. It's got its size. It's got a label of the button. And you can see there's this little red indicator up here just saying hello. But when I click on it, nothing happens. So now we need to add some interaction. I'm back in the app.js file, which is, as you recall, the file that gets called when the application uh, gets created. That's the file that does it. And notice here that it has this launch function that gets fired. And what happens is the part you should be interested in is initialize the main view. So it gets the viewport and it adds our main myapp.view.main, that view that we're working on. It actually, this one here, it actually adds that to the display. So what I'm going to do is just at the beginning of the launch here, just so we can understand going forward, once we add the controller, what's happening in the order it happens, I'm going to add a console log there and I'm just going to save the file. If we go back to our application in the browser and we run it, you should now see that there's a console log that says inside the app launch function. So we know that's happening and you can see where that happens in the order. Let's go back to the code and let's move over to our main.js. Now, before we go any further, I want to show you one simple way that you can add the interaction for a button. Personally, this is not the way I like to do things. Personally, I like to use a controller to control it, but you can actually set some functions here on the view and I'll show you that now. So let's just put a comma here and I'll paste in some code just to save time again. And you can see, let's just balance our curly braces. There we go. And let's just move that there for consistency. So we've added this listeners property and inside that object is the listeners that it's listening for. In this case, it's the tap. And when the button is tapped or clicked, it's going to run this function, which takes these arguments. And I got these arguments again from the documentation. And all it's going to do is run a console.log and log this. So save the file, go back to the browser, reload the application. And now when I click the button, you'll see we get these log statements. So pretty simple, straightforward there. We can actually fire that function in line if we want, but that's not the way I like to do things. Realistically, as your applications get more complicated, you're going to want to use the controllers. And so we're actually going to have this click event picked up by the controller and have the controller do all the hard lifting and run the code that we need to run instead of the view, which is really the way things should be. So let's go back and do that. Let's go back to the code. 
First of all, back in the view, let's remove the listeners. We don't need those anymore. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that comma and save the file. Because now we're going to use this ID that we put in place, this my button. So now has come the time to create a new controller. So we're just going to click up here, create a new file. And I'm going to call this main.js. It's always a good idea to name your controllers uh, with the same name as your view because Sench is just going to pick it up and run with it. So I'll just do that there. And I'm going to paste the code in. And this is some basic code that I've got here for a controller. Let's just run it through quickly. So we go through, we define this startup, start app.controller.main. Main is the name of the controller. It extends uh, ext.app.controller. I've added some empty configs here that we'll fill out in a second. So we'll come back to those. Now each controller has an init and a launch function that gets called. You don't have to put these in here, but I have just so you can see what's going to happen here. And I've put some console logs in. So you'll see when the main controller init takes place and you will see when the main controller launch takes place. And let's go up here. And so we're going to start going through these. We have refs, control and routes. We're not going to use routes in this, but it's in there anyway. So but it's going to stay empty. So don't worry about that. Now the refs is the references, a list of references back to the items in our view. So that my, that my button, for example. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add an item here. I'm just going to paste it in and I'm giving it a name that we're going to use in the controller here called the button, but it's referencing the ID. If you remember, we've got this ID of my button and that's what we're putting in here. It's referencing the ID of my button. So each of your IDs in the view would be unique and that's how you can target those particular items without having to figure out the path. You know, you don't have to uh, navigate the DOM or anything like that with JavaScript. Sentry will take care of it for you if you use these IDs or these item IDs. Now, next up, we have control. And I'm going to paste this in here. Let's go through this. So we're going to basically control. We're going to take control of the button. So we're taking control of the ID of my button in the view. And here we place our tap event. So. I've got a tap and I'm going to call a handler that I'm going to create here in a second and I'm going to call it handle button click. So let's go ahead and paste it in. And basically we call this handle button click. It's a function that gets executed with button, which is the, in this case, is the this. So this button here is referencing our button back up here. And again, I've got a console log to say that the button was clicked and I'm actually going to change the set badge text. Uh, you'll find that as a method in the documentation. So I'm going to change the text of that little red uh, indicator that you saw in the top right to you clicked me. And I'm actually going to take this one out here. We're not going to worry about these in this particular version. So we're just going to save this now. So, you know, if you need to replay the video a few times to understand what's happening, go through it. And actually, before I go any further, uh, I got to make a change here. This is the perils of copy and paste. The name of my application is actually my app. I copied it from a different example that I've created. So let's say that. So it's actually my app dot controller dot main. Let's go over to the web browser and reload the application. So let's notice a couple of things before we hit the button. You can see we've got the console log to say that the main controller was init was fired. You can see that the app launch function was fired. And then further down here, you can see that the main controller launch was fired. So it gives you a bit of an insight into the, the order of things here. Basically, all the controllers that are listed in the application will be created. They will init and then they will be launched um, when the application is loaded. So take that into account. There's, there are ways around that and you can change those. But just take into account like I say, sometimes just having, you know, if you find things aren't working the way you expect, having those in init and in launch uh, console logs may give you a clue as to something not firing in the right order. But anyway, let's go ahead and click our button. And you'll notice that sure enough, everything we expected, the little uh, notification here changed to you clicked me. And over here, you can see that button clicked and, and we can do this a couple of times. We see we've got three button click there in the log. So that's basically 
very basics of the view and controller in Sensor Touch. Next time around we'll look at some other things, but this hopefully gives you an idea of how you can start working with it. Um, you should really look at the documentation for all the different items you can put in the view, all the components, and you can see that using these refs in the controller really helps simplify handling all of the code in one place, which of course is you know the beauty of a MVC to begin with. So I hope this helped and I'll see you next time.